Hey guys, Game Guide here with Mount and Blade Warband 1776 American Revolutions mod. So this is a mod, as I'm sure you can guess by the name of it, about the American Revolution. And because the previous mod overview got such great feedback, I figured I would do this one next. Now this mod is a mod that basically reamps the campaign, and it re it basically renames all the provinces and it adds in some very interesting stuff that I really uh, think adds a lot to the game and even if you're not a huge fan of the American Revolution theme they still did add a bunch of really cool stuff to this and if you're a history lover like I am then uh, this mod is definitely really really good so uh, let's get into it we're gonna start a new game and I want to make this clear as well I am going to be doing a short little mini series on this mod it's gonna be probably eight parts 30 minutes a piece is what I'm shooting for and if you guys enjoy it, then we're good to go, and um, then I'll, co you know, I'll continue this series. It's going to be an eight-part mini-series on the American Revolution uh, mod here, and I'm going to do it as a, basically an American nobleman. This mod offers some really cool stuff that allows you kind of the quest line varies with what your background is, and I really think that's a cool thing that they added. Really, in native, it didn't matter so much, but in this one, it does. There is um, a bug here, as you can see. Next function is invalid, so you have to choose no for the next part, which is uh, perfectly fine. This mod, I don't think, is completely finished, so I'm sure they'll finish this up at some point. So it says, Welcome to 1776 American Revolution, the raise of a free new country, the United States of America. And we have to choose no for this. And game option selection completed. So we can move on to creating our character and getting into the whole story. Now, for me, I personally like to have a very functioning storyline to my character, kind of get me more into the game. So uh, let's take a look here. Welcome, adventurer, to Mount Blade Warband 1776. Before beginning the game, you must create your character. Remember that in the traditional 18th century society depicted in the game, war and politics are usually dominated by male members of the upper classes. That does not, however, mean that you should not choose to play a female character or one who is not of noble birth. Upper class males of European descent may have a somewhat easier start, but women, commoners, and Native Americans can attain all the same goals, and in fact may have a much more interesting if more challenging early game. If you select Indian Warrior as your father, your character will be a Native American Indian. You cannot change your race or gender once you start the game. So this is a this is basically telling you that what you pick in these next couple parts really does matter. Before it just impacted basically your skill set. In this it it impacts your basically how people feel about you and how they're going to um, basically perceive you and if you're going to be able to make a good impression or not so I really like that the mod added this and um, for this mod just because this is a mini series and for the purposes of the mini series I'm going to play the upper class you know American soldier pretty much that's going to be at an easier start in the beginning so I'm going to go with that just for the sake of a mini series but by all means you can get this mod and you know take a look at all the other stuff that you can do as like a female character or a Native American Indian or all this other stuff because they do have a rough'er start and I have played as them they do have a rough, uh, rougher start but um, just for the sake of a mini series to show off the mod I'm going to be uh, doing this on essentially the upper class alright so select your character's gender just to uh, for sake of mini series once again we're going to choose male and now you were born years ago your father was and again if you choose Indian warrior you will be an Indian basically an Indian and you will have a tougher start once again so uh, we're going to have our father our uh, father here be a veteran soldier as a child your family scrabbled out a meager living from your father's wages as a soldier of the king it was not an easy existence and you were too poor to get much of an education you learned mainly how to defend yourself on the streets with or without a weapon in hand you started to learn about the world almost as soon as you could walk and talk you spent early life as and i don't know there's a nobleman's court craftsman's apprentice you know he could be a shop assistant street urchin farm child a farm child doesn't make really too much sense because our father was a soldier it doesn't make too much sense so I'm not gonna go with that we wouldn't be a street urchin because I mean once again father was a soldier they don't get paid a ton but again not really and the rest of these I can go with so 
I think I'm going to be a page in a nobleman's court because that seems the, like kind of the easy road. You, you have some background and all that. But uh, this is essentially saying um, basically as life goes on, things change and, you know, you turn into something else. So you want to basically go into a new career. And I think I'm going to be a soldier. Uh, I feel that that's the right choice because our father was a soldier. So we'll follow in his footsteps. This, I think, will also give us a good opportunity to have some fighting background, which is definitely necessary for, uh, for basically being an adventurer and wandering the lands. So, uh, we'll go soldier. And basically, I guess I'll read this part. Though the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way you had become a man, and the whole world seemed to change around you. With few options available to you, you enlisted as a soldier in the local regiment. You practiced long hours with weapons, learning how to deal out hard knocks, and how to take them, too. Discipline was ferocious, and you soon developed a deep hatred for your own sergeants and officers. Your future seemed to hold nothing but bad food, floggings, and the uncertainty, or, or and the certainty rather, of an early death. You decided to strike out on your own, but soon everything changed, and you decided to strike out on your own as an adventurer. Um. Okay. So uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, some there there's some like uh, misconceptions in this mod that they need to uh, kind of address, like uh, just in the text. Not a big deal. I'm being very picky with this, but some people really do want to, uh, you know, completely proper. They're very set with role playing. But here you go. Uh, you decide to strike out on your own, but then it says, but soon everything changed, and you decide to strike out on your own. So, just in case you're very picky about that, what made you take this decision was now personal revenge. I guess that could kind of go with the officers and this horrible treatment, but I don't think I would strike out for revenge against the officers. I think I just didn't want to be there, so the loss of a loved one doesn't really apply here. Uh, Wanderlust, that is definitely a big one. Uh, being forced out of your home doesn't really make much sense, because you decided to strike out on your own. Up here says that at least, and why would you be forced out of your home? Very picky, but I, I'm definitely into the role play. Uh, loss for money and power. That's another big one, because you're sick of this bad surroundings, the bad food, the floggings, the certainty of an early death. You want money, you want power, you want uh, people around you that can basically order, you can order people around you. So, I think that's a huge one. I don't think it would be so much about the power, but the money is huge. I think I'll go for lust for money and power. Again, not so much power, but money is definitely a big one. We've lived a very meager life, and we want money, so... Only you know exactly what caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. To everyone else, it's clear that you're now motivated solely by personal gain. You want to be rich, powerful, respected, feared. Not so much feared, but it all goes with the territory, I suppose. You want to be the one whom others prefer to obey. Absolutely. You want people to know your name and tremble whenever it is spoken. Not tremble, but be aware and respect, at least. You want everything, and you won't let anyone stop you from having it. So let's become an adventurer and ride to our destiny. And for the sake of the mod, I'm going to allow myself to quit without saving. There won't be too much off-screen work, at least I don't think so as of yet, because it's going to be kind of straightforward. Um, anyway, I'm going to name my guy Kyle, just uh, hopefully that should be a sufficient name. And we want to improve our strength, agility, intelligence, and charisma, and we have four attribute points. I'm not going to put it into every one, because really, you kind of want to focus on intelligence in the beginning, I've found. Because that is what gets you trainer, I believe. Yes, it is. Trainer is absolutely vital, at least with me. I find it absolutely vital because you do not want to lose recruits right off the bat. You want to have time to train them. And really, going to a training camp is a real waste of time. Most of the time, you just want to have them in your inventory and let them train. And that's what trainer does. Every day, each hero with this skill adds some experience. So that's very nice, and I love trainer. So let's get into it here. Uh, I think I'll put, a, yeah, about that much into intelligence, and then I'll put one into strength. Because our guy is a veteran soldier, so we want him to have good strength. And uh, we'll put one into iron flesh, one into power strike. Weapon master's pretty vital. Uh, we'll put one into persuasion, one into prisoner management, because that is a good way of making money in the beginning. If you can take on some bandits, take some of them prisoner, it's definitely really nice to sell them to, like, uh, Somebody who will take them for money, a, a ransom broker, I believe is what they're called, and you can make some money off that. So anything that really can get us money in the beginning is definitely helpful. Surgery's nice because it'll 
basically reduce the chance of your party members being killed. We'll put one into that, and then trainer. Uh, oh, we have one more. Um, I guess tactics would be good, and basically every two levels of this skill increases starting battle advantage by one. Uh, I don't know how effective it is, but it seems to do the job pretty well. I, I haven't really done much with tactics before, and pro I probably won't in this mod either, but I just put a couple in it just to kind of have a little bit more of an advantage. Alright, so let's put a couple of points into one-handed weapons. And then, I, well, I might use most of them, but uh, then we'll put one into pistols, because I'm most of the time you're going to start off with a pistol. Another thing about this mod, it incorporates pistols, long guns, um, grenades, and a bunch of other stuff that I'll highlight while we get into it. So, uh, yeah, my name's going to be Kyle, and we're going to ride out. Okay, now we need to go into character creation, and... I don't know uh, about you guys, I don't know if it's just me, but sometimes this is a bit glitchy. Do not click randomize. That is huge. Randomize will freeze your game. It has happened to me every time. I'm not sure if it'll happen to you. You can try it. It's really not going to hurt anything. But yeah, don't uh, don't click randomize. That's just friendly advice there. Um, anyway, I, I don't know about that. What well, looks good? Um... Uh, alright, so, first up, this hair, it looks too noble. We don't really want a nobleman's haircut, because we're sons, uh, we're, we're the son of a soldier. We're not incredibly of noble birth. Our father was a, um, or we started out as a page at a nobleman's court, but this is too noble for a soldier. So, we do want a beard. I think a soldier should definitely have a beard. Does that look good? Well, let's choose the hair. Hmm... I don't know, this just doesn't seem quite right. Oh, hmm. I could see a ponytail on a soldier. I could, yeah, I could see that after he, when he becomes an adventurer. I could see that. See, what fits well. There's some uh, pretty nice choices. I don't know, then it, just, it, it doesn't really work with it. I don't, hmm. Don't think just a mustache would do. That might work. I don't, know, I don't like his skin tone, really. Maybe that? Ah, uh, oh man, this is a tough decision. I think this will do. Yeah, I think this will do. All right, let's get into it. All right, so North America is aflame. Many of the former British colonies are in open revolt and have declared themselves a new independent country, the United States. So. France, Spain, and Holland are awaiting their chances to attack a weakened British Empire to regain territory lost during the Seven Years' War, French and Indian War. The Native American Indian tribes continue to hold rivalries with assistance from the European powers. One thing that unites the Indians is their suspicion of the expanding American settlements. This is a land where an ambitious, uh, you person, I believe young person, could make a reputation, uh, reputation and a fortune. You join a wagon train to the Iroquois. I mean, it, basically, this is going to define where you're going to start out. It doesn't necessarily do that, but it's where you're going to essentially spawn. So you kind of want to set it to where you're going to be for the rest of the game. Not really sure why you wouldn't, but there you go. Uh, we can take a boat up the Hudson River to Albany. But basically, you know, this wagon train to the Iroquois territory, you're going to be, you know, Iroquois Indian, Cherokee territory, Cherokee Indian, uh, Virginia. That, of course, is going to be... Um, America, then British Canada, Britain, you get the idea. So, uh, Virginia, because we do want to, uh, become a part of America, so we're gonna go to Richmond, Virginia. You took passage with a trading longship carrying gry falcons from the furthest reaches of the north to be parked for linen and wool. It sailed early in the season, but the master reckoned that the risks of drifting ice and later winter storms could be justified by arriving ahead of the sea raiders, who by April would be sailing forth from their island lairs to ravage Caladria's coast. It was some relief when your ship came in sight of the delta of the Vile and Bullock rivers, and a short while later rode past tidal flats and coastal marshes to the city of Sargoth, home to the sea raiders. Distant kinsmen, the Nordic lords, who a few generations ago had carved themselves a kingdom in this rich but troubled land. 
You're exhausted by the time you find an inn in Richmond and you fall asleep quickly. However, you awake before dawn and are eager to explore your surroundings. You venture out onto the streets, which are still deserted. All of a sudden, you hear a sound that stands the hairs on your neck on end. The rasp of a blade sliding from its scabbard. Okay, so that is the background story of how you end up in Caladria. And as you can see, we start off kind of new. It's, it's, a, it's a new little start. We're starting off on a canoe. Which, again, picky. It's not exactly like the storyline there said. You had found an inn, and you slept, and then you got up, and you heard a sword, because you went outside, and, well, we're back on a canoe. Not really sure. That's just uh, how the game designer saw it. But that is fine. Also, you do not see him here. I, I'm not really sure, but you don't see the bandit right now, and uh, he's going to be in the city. Anyway, there's baggage here, and this is basically your inventory, um, as you can see. You could discard stuff. Another thing with this mod, I'm not really sure why they did this, but they fill up your inventory with a bunch of essentially crap. And you start off with no food, so you have to remember to buy food huge with this mod. But, um, I made that mistake in the beginning a couple times, so, yeah, just make sure to buy food. And sell all this stuff, because literally all this stuff is useless, essentially. Because you have better stuff on right now than all this stuff, so. Start off with a blunderbuss here, you just get a little knife and grenades. Uh, get good cartridges. You actually really start off with some good stuff, which, um, I don't know. Your guy looks pretty good. Also, my hair is white, and I don't know if that's just because it's like a sign of nobility to wear a wig this way, or what what the deal with that is, but there you go. Now uh, we have 15 bullets, and also, you'll notice that the bandit does not have a sword. That is not a sword from its scabbard. No, that is a gun, and we're going to return fire. The guns have a lot of, um... I guess down recoil. I'm not really sure how to call it recoil. It it goes down over time. The bullet goes down, so um, you need to aim really high. Eh, maybe I'm aiming too high. You know what? I hate guns on this game. Too. I hate guns on this mod, to be honest. But I do love that. Okay. Well, when I hit, I've actually never missed a grenade before. Grenade! Oh my god! I actually missed. Wow. It's amazing. I've never missed with a grenade like that before. Grenades are incredibly inaccurate, but when they hit, they will kill instantly. So, that's the idea. Come on, buddy. There we go. Man. This guy was not easy to kill like all the other times I've done this. Hello, William Johnson. Also, you notice that the uh, crosshair there is still on the screen. Not sure why. Are you alright? Well, I guess you're alive at any rate. I'm not sure that we can say the same for the other fellow. That's one less thief to trouble our streets at night. Although heaven knows he won't be the last. Anyway, maybe you can help me with something. Let's talk more inside. Out here, we don't know who's listening. So he takes me to his house, and he's just making sure nobody followed us, and we can go in. And we're going to talk to him. So he has um, made a lovely change of outfit here. You can see that he's in his, basically, line infantry uniform, which is very awkward for a merchant. But there you go. It's pretty fancy. Uh, you can see... What is he cooking? It looks like lava? I, I don't know. Uh, he has some guns on the wall, you know, cabbage in the corner. Another gun. Very nice looking sword. Unfortunately, you can't take any of this. Some food. But yeah, this guy must be really loaded to have all these guns. He has uh, fur. Just not really sure why. In bed. So this is his house. It's a, it's a bit nicer than the opening tavern start in Native, which is pretty nice. Now, let me explain my proposition. We've always had brigands in the hills driven to banditry by war, debt, or love of violence. Recently, however, they've been getting bolder, leaving their camps in the wild and venturing into town. Basically saying the watch captain says that it's just, it's just all random and he doesn't think so. And they're saying they took his brother. And he wants me to get him back. He wants me to collect five men and that's the basic story. It's the same story from Native in the beginning. And in my opinion want to do this quest to get opening money and opening troops not really sure why you wouldn't it's a very big pain sometimes but you know what what are you gonna do anyway uh, he says I look like I've had a bit of experience with a blade even though I shot him okay more importantly you must have a bit of fire in your belly or you wouldn't be coming to Kaladri to seek your fortune now that is true all right so he wants me to gather a small party track down the bandits yada 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 all right Good, you can find me again in the tavern here in Richmond after you've got your group together, then we'll speak about what to do next. So, now we leave. And, of course, there's all the same uh, keys as usual. Q is for the quests. So, let's uh, press that. You can see that we now have a quest called Collect Five Men, and he just wants us to collect five guys from the local villages. 
again, in case you've never played native even and you just want to play this mod, you can press the tab key to exit the location. They just bring up that tip there. And here is the world map, in which case there was a little bug there. Never had that happen yet, but that actually happens with Warband sometimes too. Warband native. That happens sometimes with Warband native. So uh, I think it's just with the game. Anyway, you can see that the map is pretty detailed. You have places that are actually existing. So you have New York, uh, Philadelphia. Um, what else do you have? You have Albany, Montreal, Quebec. That's up in Canada, of course. Toronto, again, Canada. You have... Um, what else do you have? Um, Charlestown, uh, Charleston. I'm a big fan of the Patriots, so that that's very nice. All right. So, let's see. Where did we start? I got in Richmond, right? So here we are. You in this mod, you don't even start off with a horse. So you must go walking around as a peasant, and you need to buy a horse. However, we will not make the same mistake as we have done in previous. Well, I have done in previous, and we will buy food. Again, food is huge. So we go into the marketplace, and as you can see, you can uh, visit the bank. There's bank in this. Uh, you can assess the local prices. That requires trading skill to do that quickly, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, automatically sell and buy food, and you know all that good stuff. But I think it's best to just trade. I I don't. I've never used that feature just because I don't know if it will do what it's meant to do. So first off, we're going to sell all of our stuff here because they. It's basically all useless. And, you know what, just for the sake of testing the mod, buy food. You will buy food according to the shopping list of foods on... Shopping list? Huh? Oh, configure the shopping list of foods. Okay. Huh. Well, I don't really feel like going through all that shopping list. But that's another cool feature. Um, I'll show it to you again. Here's the shopping list. Basically, uh, you, you can set how much you're going to buy. It's a shopping list. It literally is. So, that's a very nice feature. I didn't even realize that was uh, implemented here because I've never used it. And uh, there you go. So, this is actually a pretty handy way of just buying food quick. Like, bam, bam, bam. I want this, 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 and that. And there you go. So, you can have a shopping list. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. All right. But just for the sake of uh, me actually knowing what I'm doing, I'm just going to go in here and buy stuff. Uh, whiskey. You have whiskey, and I, you don't you have to get whiskey. It's, you know, I, well, it costs a lot, so I'm going to avoid that, actually, for now. But, you know, it's whiskey, and it is the, you know, the 1700s. Mm, I'm thinking about just getting it for the time's sake, but nah, nah, we'll avoid it. Ale, ale, we'll, we'll get one ale, because that costs less. All right, uh, corn, meat, fish. Okay, bread, very important. That's eh, a bit too much food, I think. Oop. Yeah, alright, that should do. That should definitely do. Okay, so there. Ale, corn, meat, bread, and fish. We have a good assortment. And we can now go and collect some men from the neighboring villages. Also, let's see if we can get a horse really quick. Horses are pretty expensive, some of them. We can get this, which, you know, to be honest... I can't live without a horse, because, I don't know, It horses are huge to me in this game, so, we'll get it. It's only 160, so they are pretty generous with horse prices, because you don't start off with one, but uh, it's still kind of annoying. Anyway, there we are, we are Kyle, and we are roaming the lands. Alright, so first let's go to, oh, I thought that was a, <laughs> that was a bandit, that would have been bad. Alright, let's go to Fredericksburg, then I guess Alexandria, and... Wherever, wherever else. Um, so, you can see that they've added in some new pictures, some new overlays on the loading screens, which I forgot to mention, but some pretty nice stuff they've added, some pretty nice artwork. Alright. So, let's recruit volunteers, and now here's a new feature. You can recruit mounted patrols. I do not see the problem in this until you get a larger army and you really can't afford to have them in your group. Mounted patrols can be nice probably then, but not until that point. Anyway, let's recruit them. And we got four guys, so Alexandria should give us our last couple, and we can go back and talk with the guy in Richmond. Um, what's his name? Let's check. Uh, William Johnson. Seems like such an easy name to remember, but uh, I guess it's not. Uh, another thing is that a lot of these rivers you see are actually crossable by just your horse. 
It's uh, something new. Normally you'd need a bridge, but in this mod you do not. You can just cross it with your horse. In a lot of cases. Alright, so two are recruits, and we are good to go. Alright, let's go to Richmond, and we will talk to this guy. Uh, also, I don't know if this is a problem with me. It doesn't happen for me in native, only in this mod. When you go control space to basically make time go by faster, and you can get to different places quicker, it lags a little bit. I, it's not a huge problem, because I only, like, tap it every once in a while, but if you're somebody who, like, loves to hold it down, it's going to lag a little bit for you. Don't know why, it's, it's just a weird bit of lag, it's not even frame lag for me, it's just lag, which is odd, but, uh, that's just something you should know. Non-aggression treaty between, uh, some Indian tribes, which is perfectly fine, really not our concern, and we meet him back in the tavern. Alright. And we have found our first belligerent drunk. Honestly, this is one of the rarest things that I've... I, I don't even know. Uh, yeah. You're some sort of animal. So, you know what? Get out. What? Ow. I'm getting spammed by the AI. Oh, this is bull. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. <sighs> wow. That knife apparently cannot block his hits. Wow. You slump to the floor, stunned by the drunk's last blow. Your attacker's rage immediately seems to be slackened. He drops into a chair and sits there watching you, muttering under his breath, almost regretfully. A few of the other patrons manage to coax him to his feet and bundle him out the door. One of the other tends to your wounds, and, you are, and soon you two are back on your feet, unsteady but alive. Wow. Oh, he's not here anymore. Ah. First off, I'm not sure how the gunshot didn't get him, but what? A, okay, I'm sorry, guys. That that looked really bad for me. <laughs> Let's talk to William Johnson. Splendid work. You have hired enough men to take on the bandits. Now travelers entering Richmond have told us there is a small group of robbers lurking on the outside of town, so uh, we hunt for them. Oop. Did I mean to do that. Uh, mercenary swordsmen. This is a bit too much. Six for I think around 800. I, yeah, I don't even have enough for them, so I'm not even going to bother with it for right now. Um, sorry, I can't afford you, basically. Oh, also, that reminds me of something. In this game, you can also buy a ship, which is a very nice, uh, very nice. I'm not exactly sure the full effectiveness of a ship, because you can travel across a good bit of water on your own. But, during this mod, I am going to buy a ship just to see how it works. I have yet to buy a ship, so it, it's going to be something good, I'm sure. And, um... This also brings me to another point that uh, you have a new money system, which is shillings. Okay. So, now we can hunt bandits, and there they are, a band of robbers. There's only four of them, so we should be fine. And apparently, uh, oh, apparently we've been looking for them, and, you know, we want them to basically give away their location of the prisoners. So, let's do it. Alright, so this is a bit new, and I quite like it. Essentially what you can do is um, change the commander, take the field, lead the troops, charge the enemy, all, all this other good stuff, which I quite like, uh, which I quite like, rather, and I'm going to lead my troops, because, I don't know, it, it seems like they all do the same thing. I'm not positive, though, so I'm just not going to really worry about it. In this uh, game as well, you'll find mostly that um, you're going to have a lot of the buttons do the same thing. Also, spawns from one uh, side to the other is actually quite a distance. This one is not really that much of a distance, but not really they are, so be wary of that. I remember uh, last time I started on this part, it took me, it took them, rather, because I literally just sat here and did this, but it took them a long time to get here, but because they're in a different position this time, they're, they're much closer for some reason, which is nice, I guess cut this guy down. Ow! There we go. He shot me. There we go. He's dead. Good job, man. Why are you pointing the wrong way? Whatever. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so I killed one. Congratulations. I spare me. Spare my life. Let me go and I'll go far away from here and learn an honest trade and you'll never hear of me again. And We'll spare your life, but in exchange, we want information. So, he's going to tell us where they are, 
basically where their hideout is, and it is near Fredericksburg, and he's just going to describe it. Okay, so a Frontier Knife, that's uh, it's pretty darn good. So we have a Rusty Frontier Knife right now, so I don't really want that. We will exchange it for a nice, new, shiny Frontier Knife. And I don't think there's anything really better. Yeah, we have Nomad Boots. It's good. Nomad Boots are nice. Anything else? Yeah, I think I like this kind of uh, this kind of hat better than that, but I don't know. Anyway, we'll take a couple of these things to sell. Yeah, I don't really want to go below 10. We'll take that. All right. So that ends this part of Mount Inblade War, ba War Band. I don't know why I keep doing that. Well, I did it earlier anyway. Monoblade Warband 1776 American Revolutions mod. Hope you guys enjoyed this part, and the rest of this part will be coming up around every other day. I'll have a part up. That's the plan. So, um, stick around for that, guys, and I will see you in the future with more of this.